Hey everyone, David Herster here. Uh, following up on my talk on B2C, I thought it'd be a good idea to um, go through a quick demo of setting up a sign up sign in flow in Azure AD B2C and what that looks like integrated in with your web application. So I've already provisioned my B2C tenant and I've logged into it. And um, the application I'm going to be working with is the demo um, ASP.NET Core application that you can get off of the um, Microsoft uh, MSDN Docs site. So, um, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've created two app registrations because the demo application is a MVC application and then also um, it's an MVC app that calls a web API uh, for some uh, to-do information. So I've created both of those app registrations, nothing uh, interesting there. Uh, the Web API um, does expose a uh, scope of files download, and my MVC app has permission um, to call that. I've also configured an additional identity provider in addition to the out-of-the-box local account identity provider that B2C gives you, um, which is really just your email um, and password uh, set of credentials that B2C manages. I'm also allowing my users to bring their GitHub accounts to my application. Um, and so I'm going to actually allow my users to authenticate against GitHub and uh, get a token back from GitHub. To do that, I went over to GitHub uh, and my developer account created an application. And when I did that, I was given a client ID and I created a secret. And I brought those values back to B2C and configured my GitHub identity provider um, in this slide out window. Once I've just provided those two bits of information, um, GitHub is now available for my users to be able to authenticate against. These other identity providers out of the box that B2C provides uh, really all follow the same pattern. Really, you go over to the identity provider that you want to integrate with, um, create an application, you get a client ID and a secret, you bring it back, um, and you can fit, uh, uh, complete the configuration. If your identity provider choice isn't listed, you can always use the generic OpenID Connect provider at the top. Um, it asks for a bit more information, but essentially you're always providing a client ID and a secret, and you're just doing a little bit of claims, claims mapping here at the end. Um, I've also done a little bit of branding in my tenant, so I uh, didn't want the default out of the box B2C Ocean Blue background. Um, so I'm going to provide a background image of the U.S. and then also provide a banner logo of the U.S. flag. Um, I could um, collect additional user attributes from my users when they sign up. Um, out of the box, B2C gives you about a dozen or so user attributes, but I could add additional ones. Let's say I wanted to collect um, a loyalty number from my customers. I could add that loyalty number attribute name here and then provide a data type, whether it's a string boolean or int. So once I've done all that, I bring them all together in what's called user flows. So user flows really are orchestrations that a user goes through or workflows that a user would go through um, during an identity um, action on your website. So PDC provides a number of user flows out of the box for you, um, and they really all revolve around identity. There's a combined or a unified sign up and sign in user flow. And they also have split out sign up and separate uh, separate sign up and a separate sign in user flow um, if you want to uh, manage these differently. Um, there's also um, a user flow for editing a profile. So let's say you want to either change your name um, or uh, maybe update the loyalty number that you're associated with. You could do that through um, the profile editing user flow. And then also you could um, enable self-service password reset. Um, where a user either forgot their password or they want to change their password, um, you can invoke that user flow from your application. Uh, creating a user flow really just requires answering a few quick questions. So I selected I want to create a sign up and sign in uh, user flow. Um, I hit next, and really at this point, I have to give it a name. I need to specify my sign up and sign in um, identity providers. So whether or not I'm going to use the local account email. Um, type of credential and also the other identity providers that I've configured, such as GitHub. Um, I also specify my multi-factor settings, so how I want my users to be able to multi-factor in and whether or not conditional access policies are enforced. And then lastly, I just have to specify what user attributes I want to collect from a user during the signup process 
and what claims I want to return back uh, once a user successfully logs in. Once I answer all these questions and should just take a couple of minutes, I hit create and my flow is ready to go. So I've already created a couple of user flows uh, for sign up and sign in, one for password reset, one for user or for profile edit. Um, let's take a little deeper dive into sign up and sign in to see how you can customize it a little bit more. Um, I didn't change any of the faults, but uh, you could go into a couple different areas and change the behavior of your user flow. So if I go into properties, I could change again, you know, how my multi-factor and conditional access policies are enforced. But I can also get into some details around um, token and session behavior um, within my um, with, within my user flow. So I can I can do a lot of different um, uh, customizations there. I can uh, change the different identity providers I want to be able to um, uh, allow for this user flow. I can also change what user attributes I'm collecting during signup. I can also uh, change what user or app, uh, claims I'm returning back during sign in. Um, if I have any uh, REST APIs I want to call out to during a sign up process, I can enable that here. And then lastly, under customization, I can actually um, change the layout of my pages. So really take full control over how my uh, user flow uh, looks and feels to my users. So each um, user flow consists of a number of different layouts. And so I can change each different layout inside of that user flow. Um, so if I wanted to, I could say, hey, for the local account signup page, I want to use my own custom content page. I can uh, provide the URL for that here. And I can even change uh, a little bit of, of what the uh, attributes that I'm collecting, how they, uh, how they are rendered. And then lastly, um, I can even uh, enable additional languages um, for my site so I can provide uh, multi-language support and really customize the language tokens or the string tokens uh, for each language that I support. Um, so I can do that all uh, through this language uh, uh, panel here. So once I have gone through all this and my user flow I think is ready to go, I can actually test it within the portal just by clicking this button, run user flow. So a slide out panel is going to come off here to the right. And um, at this point, I just want to select, well, what app registration do I want to run this user flow against? In this case here, my MVC app is the one I'm going to run against. Um, my reply URL, I'm going to use jot.ms, uh, which I configured in the app registration, because uh, I want to I want to look at what the ID token uh, looks like when it comes back. And that's pretty much all I need to set right now. So let's run this user flow. So again, running this user flow is going to take um, you know, my uh, all the different settings I've already set up about what identity providers I want to enable, um, what attributes I'm collecting, which ones I'm returning, um, and any look and feel customizations. It's going to bring them all together. So I run the user flow. It's going to open it up in a separate window, and my branding um, is already visible. So it's it's using the map of the U.S. that I set as my background image, um, and also is using the U.S. flag as my banner logo. Um, I've already uh, noticed that my GitHub identity provider is already provided for me here, and I can also log in with an email address and password. Now, in a previous session, I've already logged in with GitHub, so my token's still active. So I could just click on GitHub here, and I should be automatically logged in against GitHub, and then an ID token's going to come back, which it did. And so here's my information that's being returned back. So this is great. I've been able to, I've been able to uh, uh, successfully authenticate against GitHub, um, and BC has issued a token back to me. And so you can see that my identity provider here is GitHub. So I can also um, play around with this a little bit more and actually say, hey, let's uh, let's try um, a different lo uh, locale. So maybe instead of English, maybe my user is coming in um, and is uh, you know the locale is going to be uh, Spanish. So let's set that right here in this user flow uh, run uh, panel. I'm going to run it again. And that same user flow now is uh, translated into Spanish. So in this case here, I'll log in with my local account that I had already set up. And at this point here, I'll successfully log in and there we go. So pretty easy uh, to get that user flow up and running and being able to authenticate <clears throat> both locally against uh, B2C and also against a identity provider like GitHub. So once you've done that, you can even take it another step um, because really at this point, um, if I'm using my, um, 
or I'm using the sample from the ace.net um, uh, sample repo uh, that you can find off of the MSDN docs for identity. Um, I can actually take the information that I've collected um, in my app registration and my user flow and actually plug it into a demo application to actually see my user flow integrated in with an ASP.NET Core application. And so that's what I've done here. So this is just a, a demo app that you can get off of the um, Azure Samples GitHub repo. And um, in this case here, the homepage is um, an anonymous site, so anyone can hit the homepage. But once you try to go to the secure page or the to-do list, um, you're going to need to actually be an authenticated user. For secured page, it's actually going to be authenticating or you're going to stay within the MVC application. And the to-do list is actually going out to an ASP.NET Core web API where this API is actually looking for a specific set of scopes. In this case, it's that files download scope that um, we had already defined. So if I click on secured page, it's going to say, hey, you're not authenticated. I'm going to invoke that sign up sign in. Um, page. Oh, but I had already uh, logged in previously, so I need to, my token was still active. Um, so let's go back to the secure page. Let's try this again. Um, and so it, it detects that, hey, I don't have an active session. So let's go ahead and log in. So in this case here, it's going to, again, kick in with my sign up and sign in um, uh, user flow. Notice that it's actually part of the URL up here, so you can kind of see it where it's actually coming from. I'll log in. My username and password. No, if I didn't fact finger that, I didn't. And now I'm logged in. And so now I'm on the secured page, which is staying within the MVC app and even invoking to the to-do list, which invokes the web API application. So everything is good there. And I can even repeat this process um, by trying to go to secured page. Again, I'm not authenticated, but this time I can use GitHub. And we've already seen how this will play out. I've already logged into GitHub on this page, so it's not going to prompt me for a username and password on the GitHub site. Um, but again, now I'm logged in. Everything is good. I can even edit my profile um, that B2C has for uh, my GitHub account here. So this is great. So I'm able to um, quickly create a sign up and sign in page using Azure AD B2C and quickly integrate it in with um, my ASP.NET Core application, taking advantage of um, the Microsoft Identity Libraries uh, that, that are already available across a number of different languages. So hopefully you found this helpful and um, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot and talk to you later.